Mteto Nyati, of course, is a man who continues to lift the corporate game and is one of South Africa's top CEOs, having steered huge entities such as Microsoft South Africa, IBM to MTN South Africa. An inspiring story about the emergence of a role model coupled with some invaluable experiences. Mteto Nyati, good morning. Thank you for joining us on Weekend Dawn. Yeah, good morning, Liz. I'm happy to be here. Look, the title in itself uh, obviously caught my attention, betting on a darkie. Obviously, there's some derogatory terms associated with that word based on our past, but why did you choose or settle on, on naming your book that in particular? You know what's interesting, Liz, is that uh, my publishers also did not quite <laughs> like the name, but uh, I was very clear that I needed this because we need to claim uh, our, our identity as black people. In mm. fact, as any group of people, we need to claim your identity. Mm. And this is uh, one of the ways to say that, you know what, we are not going to be defined by others. You know, we're going to define ourselves. And, and we, we use this word, darky, uh, to refer ourselves in an affectionate way. But of course, a certain group of people have chosen to use it in a bad way. Mm. And I'm saying, let's claim it back. You know. mm. I'm, I'm looking at, uh, it, was, it was an enjoyable read, I must say, very easy, um, but also very authentic. Painting your thoughts to paper, what was that process like? How long did it take you? And was it sort of healing after completing it, uh, looking back at the journey and how far you'd come? Yeah, look, I'm, I'm a very private person. I'm sure you'll pick it up from the book itself. Yes. So ordinarily, a person like me would not find them you, uh, writing a book. But because of the need out there, uh, there's a lot of people that I'm supporting, uh, I'm mentoring. And when I found out that I just cannot scale, I cannot make myself to a thousand people. Yes. <laughs> so the only way that I know how is to write a book. So I chose to write a book. Mm -hmm. But in order for it to fulfill its purpose, its goal, I needed to be authentic, good and bad, say everything in yes. there. And that's what I did. It took a year to write it. You know. Your forward is by, written by uh, former President Tabo Mbeki, and I mean, he, uh, and, uh, and he, it reads, it proves that Nyati served as an effective economic and business change agent consistently. Just looking at the praise that you received over the years, the feedback, I mean, how have you come to accept it but not be defined by it? Ultimately, what I'm asking is, what defines you? <laughs> you know, what defines me, I think it's more about serving, you know, uh, the whole, the the whole point, even the book itself, you look at it, uh, I'm trying to say to everybody out there that we all have it within ourselves to be great. You know, we do not have to have these special genes or DNA or special circumstances to achieve greatness. We can go in within ourselves and find it within ourselves. So my job, I think, in life is really to awaken the giant within all of us. And yeah. wherever I go, I try to do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it goes beyond monetary uh, impact. Of course, you mentioned there's a lot of uh, mentees that you have and yeah. people that you're helping along the way. So much so that in one of the last chapters, you say that if you, well, you quote, uh, if we want a great nation, we have to change it ourselves. So just looking at South Africa, where, I, where we find ourselves today, leadership, um, also just uh, some of these state-owned entities and, and, and what that looks like. I mean, what do you say is, what do you think is the key ingredient that's missing at this point? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I go back to, to where, when I was growing up. Uh, I go to those schools. Yes. Uh, those schools didn't have much infrastructure. All that they had was great uh, leadership principles. You know, the schools that had great principles, you look at the results, correlation. You know, uh, the same thing with companies. You know, you have the same people in the companies, you change leaders, it can, it can take a, a, an average company and make it a great company mm -hmm. just by change of leadership. You can take a, a great company and it becomes a, a weak company just because you appointed a wrong leader. So to me, leadership matters. That's a starting point. Of course, you need everybody else. And that's what we need here in our country. You know, mm. decisive leadership, bold leadership, clear strategy. Where are we going as a country? We need to be very clear about that. You know, right now we're being pulled and all sorts of ideas. But we live in a country where we say that we need to have an inclusive vision. Mm. We need all South Africans to help us to achieve 
this vision of a South Africa that we're trying to build. Right now, I'm seeing people, other groups are being pushed aside. We don't need this, we don't need that. We need everybody. Yeah. And we need leaders that are able to, to, to communicate that clearly. It may not be a popular position, but that's what we need. Mm. Looking at uh, the pandemic, uh, COVID-19, that's yes. obviously sweeping the world over, the communication from government, just the stances they've taken yeah. up until this point. Do you say that, I think this is reflective of uh, what you're actually speaking of? This is exactly, I mean, the praises that uh, President Ramaphosa got after the, the speech that he made on Sunday is precisely what our country is looking for, making clear decisions, very clear decisive, giving direction, walking the talk. Yeah. You can see now, everybody, the whole cabinet is very much behind him. Everybody is doing the same thing. This is what we need, the same around corruption. We need to be having the same passion to address corruption, address education. The future of this country, you know, it, it resides. We need to address the education problem. You know. yeah. That's the kind of passion we need to have. You, your dad wanted you to become a doctor, but it <laughs> seems that you've managed to heal us through your journey uh, in the corporate space. Um, looking at uh, how you've utilized mechanical engineering in the business world, I mean, there's a certain methodology that, that must have at some point come together for you. How would you describe that? How would you say you managed to fuse the two? What is your leadership style? Yeah, so I would say, I would say Lisa, that there are things that are common for me right across. Whether when I change jobs, but I always am I'm rooted on those things. What are those? One of them is a set of values. Yes. You know, I've got values that I'm taking right across. And, but there are also capabilities that are common right through. Mm -hmm. As an engineer, the things that one has is things like, for example, problem solving, you know, critical thinking, uh, coming up with solutions. So regardless whether I'm talking about human problems or mechanical problems, there's this ability of problem solving. You take it, you know. So I may be in Ultron or maybe in MTN. It doesn't matter, you know, yeah. I'm using that. So my leadership style, uh, clear, decisive, uh, very much values-based leadership, but it's a leadership that's based on, rooted on connecting with the grassroots, you know. I actually wanted to also ask about the different companies that you managed to uh, lend your services to. What about them resonated for you? What, what did you see at the beginning that obviously only materialized later on, but, but obviously you had a very, very clear vision upon starting? Yeah, I, I, the thing that attracts me the most uh, is, uh, is there needs to be a challenge in the job. You know, uh, where there's a problem, I'm attracted to that. <laughs> <laughs> when people are running away, I'm attracted to You're exactly you have to go there. <laughs> and the other good thing about that is that you don't really have too much competition because not, not many people want those jobs in any way. So it's a good thing for me. <laughs> uh, but the other thing, you need to have a connection with regards to the values. You remember I spoke about yeah. the values. There needs to be alignment, a values alignment. You'll see that I, I stay a long time in, in the jobs that I do. Yeah. It's linked to that thing. But there are spaces, there are companies where I didn't stay long. And you can be very clear that they, they, there's a problem around the values alignment. Yeah, yeah. the journey has had its ups and downs yes. and sweet spots, but also yeah. bitter battles. What would you say was some of the, uh, was, was a highlight for you in the corporate space? And then in the same breath, what was your biggest um, inertia you had to overcome within? Yeah. I would say that uh, the, the, the most, yeah, the thing that, that I'm, I'm, I'm happy about the most is when I was in, in, in MTN, mm. yeah, I'm sorry, uh, in Microsoft. In Microsoft, Microsoft. Okay. Uh, there, uh, I remember being asked the question, you know, what, is it, what will it take for you to continue to be growing this company? Mm. Uh, I said, hey, the challenges that we have in our country is with what led shortage of skills. And they said, how are you going to address it? Like all good managers, they, they take it back to you. How are you going to address it? You know, so so I, we came to a, a way of, of, of looking at how do we take unemployed graduates in South Africa, preparing them and skilling them and, and providing them to our channels uh, in South Africa. To cut a long story short, in a period of six years, we're able to place about 7,000 unemployed youth within our network. Think about the people that rely on those 7,000. How many people uh, are, are, are linked to them? Mm. You know? So the impact 
That's where I saw the impact of working for a company. We cannot just underestimate it. We can do so much more. So that, that to me was one of the, 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 the things that uh, I would say, I know the challenge is linked to race. You know, uh, yeah. it continues to be a problem wherever one goes. You know? So I've chosen to, to accept that, you know what, this is how things are. You know, you may think that it's unfair, you think, that, why is it like this? But it is how it is. So I start from the point of, you know, I expect the worst. But if, if I end up, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how I proceed from that point. Mm. Mm. I'm, I'm looking at uh, some of the mistakes that you made over the years. I mean, obviously, uh, we're, we're, we're not all, it's not always the good. There's yeah, uh, mistakes that come mistakes. as well. What would you say has been one of your biggest mistakes? How, how did you heal from that? You know, I'll say the big one for me, uh, the recent one, when I was mm. at MTN. Uh, they, they, when I was at MTN, a group of people who came with a great opportunity. I thought it was a great opportunity. And I said, there's this 5G and 4G opportunity. So these guys are who are behind uh, rain yes. uh, at the time. But it was still an idea at the time. Yeah. Uh, look at where rain is today. You know, mm. Delivering services, we missed that opportunity completely. We were arrogant as a company. We did not give them any time. I should have stayed very close to that. Uh, I delegated like I should delegate, but yeah. it was something that was strategic. I should have stayed close to that. And when I look back, it would have changed the dynamics of competitiveness in the, in the ICT space had it partnered with, uh, with mm -hmm. MTN. Unfortunately, we did not partner with them. Well, there are disruptors in the space, and of course, we, we only live and learn. I want to know from you, um, perhaps uh, having achieved everything that you have, uh, having the titles, the success, the monetary success, etc., even just the, the following um, of people who have bought into your vision and leadership style, how have you come to define success for yourself? I think success for me is, is living life uh, in your own terms. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, what do I mean by that, really? What I mean is that uh, I don't have to be somebody who's different. When I go to Ultra <laughs> or any company, I just have to be in you know, yes. I don't try to be anybody else. You know, and, and, and the ability to do that is very, very important. And many of us live ourselves uh, at the gate, when we get into, we leave ourselves, we reconnect with ourselves when we're leaving the company. The whole eight hours, we are these zombies who we do not know who they are. You mm -hmm. know? Uh, and that's sad to have people acting for, you know, it's not nice. You know, we need to be ourselves. And, uh, and, and, and the ability to be able to, to be myself all the time is something that I consider a success for me. Sure. Thank you so much for joining us in studio and, and I guess uh, sharing the insights about your book. Um, as I mentioned, it was a, it was, I enjoyed the read and I guess uh, the pressure's on waiting from here because uh, the story is not done as you continue uh, the next chapter. Maybe there's another book coming along the way. Maybe there's another book, but for me it was not about writing the book, it was really about empowering others. Mm.